So we just finished talking about how energy is made inside the sun in its core. So we have core where we have energy production. We also have the radiative zone where the energy is transported by radiation. And then we have the convective zone where the energy is from converted by, uh, transported by convection. But we can't see inside. It's opaque. We'll come back to the idea of things being opaque or transparent shortly. Um, but how do we know what the structure is? Well, there are several different things we do. Some of it is that it's manifested on the surface of the sun. So by looking at the surface, we can see what's going on. Um, we also have helioseismology, which is a way of looking at some of the motions of the surface and interpreting it for what's going on inside. And then we also build models. We basically apply physics and understand that you have to have things like hydrostatic equilibrium. You have to have a constant flow of energy. The energy has to flow out. By putting all of those things together, you can work out what the structure of the sun is. And so we want to spend a little bit of time looking at the surface. So here again, we've got the core, the radiation, the convection zones, and then you've got the surface called the photosphere. Um, outside of that, you have the atmosphere. So the photosphere is considered to be the visible surface, and um, it is the source of an absorption spectrum. You remember we did Kir Kirchhoff's laws? There is an absorption spectrum that comes from the photosphere, whereas the atmosphere actually gives rise to emission, an emission spectrum. And we'll go through each of these. So the solar surface, if we actually look at it closely, we can see into um, the, the surface just a little way. And how far we can see in depends on um, what direction we're looking in. But it appears to be granulated. That is to say, it's got these funny little blobby looks. And we call this granules. And this is effectively um, our evidence for convection. We see these things and we can interpret them in terms of the structure underneath for energy flow. So let's have a look at this more carefully. Here I've got the granules. You've got um, a light portion in the middle. They've got dark edges. You've got energy coming up in the middle and going down at the edges. And these things are approximately uh, 1,000 kilometers across, so the size of the largest asteroid. How do we know that the gas is in motion? As say I said, it's coming up in the middle where it's light and then it's dropping down at the edges. Well, they produce um, emission lines you can and, and absorption lines. You can look at how they're shifted and see that um, the middle is moving towards you and the edges move away from you. We have the Doppler effect. Um, we also know that when we have hotter gas, it's brighter. And when it's, we have cooler gas, it's darker. That's just from the Stefan Boltzmann law. Um, flux goes as T to the 4. So if it's brighter and whiter, um, it's hotter. And if it's cooler and darker, sorry, if it's darker and redder, and the gas is actually redder at the edges, um, then it must be cooler. Now, here I've got an image of the sun. We've got some sunspots, which we'll come back to. And here we've got this, what's called limb darkening. You can see it's brighter in the middle and got this kind of shadow around the edge. That's a real effect. And what we see is, um, what, we're going to have a look at when this happens. We see that there is, we're looking at cooler gas here, so it looks darker. And we're looking at hotter gas here. But why is that? It's to do with the optical depth, which I'm now going to have to explain to you. So, here I have the sun. Here's the sun. Here's the photosphere. It has a finite depth. This is not to scale. And so the light travels from here at the bottom of the photosphere through the photosphere. And so it travels a certain distance. Um, at some point, you stop being able to see through it. So you think of this as being like fog. Um, at some fog has a, uh, you know, depending on the density of it, um, you might only be able to see a few meters. And beyond that, you can't see anything. So you have a certain distance into it you can see. And the atmosphere of the sun is kind of like that. So here, you might have a photon that goes all the way from the bottom all the way through. But that same photon is not going to make it quite to the edge here because it's got a longer path to get out. And so you actually don't see that far. You only see to about here. And then right on the edge, you can see that if it's, you can only travel this far, it's going to be lost before it gets out. So you can actually only see from about this far into the photosphere. And it's cooler. Remember, the temperature goes down as you move from the center out to the edges. Um, and so what's actually happening is, as the 
um, light travels through, eventually it's going to hit a particle. It's the same with fog. Um, you, we can see each other because light bounces off of us and, and comes directly to our eye, and we can see it. If you have fog, then eventually the photons hit a particle, uh, it's actually a water droplet, um, and gets bounced out of the line of sight so we don't see. Um, and so that's what's going to happen in the atmosphere of the sun. And so um, what you get is that um, you're actually looking at something where here you're actually looking all the way down this far, and here you're only looking from about this far. And so this is kind of a scheme, another schematic of how that looks, um, so that when we're looking, you will always see that the center will look um, hotter and brighter, and the edges will be darker and cooler. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about opacity, because this matters for the interior as well. Um, opacity is just, from the term opaque, it is the ability of something to absorb radiation. And so we can see into the sun a certain distance, and beyond that distance, the radiation is completely scattered. Um, opacity is usually given by K and its wavelength dependence, so you get the subscript lambda, and it's usually measured in meter squared per kilogram. So I want you to consider here, we have a flux, which varies with lambda. We've got a flux of light hitting some material. This could be gas, it could be solid, it could be some glass. When the light enters this medium, some of it is going to be absorbed, some of it is going to be reflected, and some will come out the other side. So, assuming reflection is negligible, some of it will be absorbed, and it will depend on the density of this thing, uh, what it's made of, and how thick this thing is. And at the other side, we will have F prime. So, the change in flux as a result of going through the slab is dF, which is given by F prime minus dF. And that will be that will depend on the path length, dx, the density, rho, and the intrinsic properties, opacity, of the um, material, and the original flux, F. So, I have this equation here, and now I've rearranged it so that my f's are on one side, and now I can integrate it, and I get that as a function of the distance into the slab, the flux will be the initial flux, the incident flux, um, and then it will drop off exponentially depending on the density and the opacity and the distance into the slab. And so it diminishes pretty rapidly depending on exactly what the opacity is. And so, from opacity, we can define optical depth, which is basically saying that um, we have some something that is a function of both the opacity and the density and the path length, and it doesn't have dimensions. So now, basically, I'm saying that that exponent here, this is basically how does it drop down. You don't need to know the density, you just need to know that it drops down. If um, tau is a lot less than 1, then you don't lose much compared to the instant light, and you have something that's optically thin, and it's transparent. If this is greater than 1, then the exponential fall is huge, and you start to lose things, and it's opaque. Not much light goes through. Remember, this is wavelength dependent. So the photosphere is optically thick, but the chromosphere and the atmosphere is optically thin. So photons don't make it through the photosphere. They do make it through the chromosphere. Now, what is it gives rise to this opacity? So you have to have a mechanism by which you're doing this absorbing. So the sun's photosphere behaves like a black body, um, and it must be opaque, but it's very low density. So it has to be something that's giving rise to a high opacity in order to overcome the fact that it's low density. How does it become opaque? Well, it's actually to do with the fact that um, in, an, in a, an atom, the first shell is two electrons, so you can add an electron and it will fill that shell, and so it's somewhat stable. But it has a low ionizational potential, so a photon comes along and it will knock that electron back out. But that means that you have um, electrons floating around, they will join the hydrogen that is uh, neutral hydrogen, and then they'll be knocked back out, and then they'll join again, and they'll be knocked back out. But that means that you're constantly absorbing and emitting um, photons that can have any energy above this ionization potential. And so what you get is um, this um, hydrogen with an extra electron plus a photon um, goes backwards and forwards 
between neutral hydrogen and electrons being free. And so you you get lots of absorption and lots of emission and you don't have any lines and so you get this nice continuum. And that's where we're going to stop for this topic. We'll be coming back and doing